Welcome back to the Toolbox. Tony Deathridge, Service Manager for Snorkel. We're going to start a several part series here where we're going to go through um, digital voltmeter basics, going over how to set up your meter for different tests, checking voltage, checking resistance, um, checking amperage, um, those types of things. So we're going to we're going to start that this week and going to continue on over the next few weeks going through this series. Digital voltmeters is a critical component to troubleshooting any type of equipment. Digital voltmeters come in all kinds of different sizes, um, different features. Um, the three that we have listed here or shown here are three different brands, obviously. Um, the Snap-on on the left, Fluke in the middle, and then a uh, no-name unit on the right side. So some of the features that you want to look for, um, like auto ranging. Auto ranging means that as you check different values, rather that be resistance, voltage, those types of things, the meter automatically goes to the correct range so that you're reading good voltage. Um, that will be demonstrated later on in the video. Um, what we have here are all DVOMs, which stands for Digital Voltage Ohm Meter, DVOM. So from this point forward, we're going to concentrate on using this meter for all of our tests and everything that we're going to be discussing. So with that, every meter comes with a different series of leads. Some leads have a protective coating on them. Um, so if you're in a high uh, voltage situation, you don't have to worry about your leads coming in contact. So that's a protection. Um, some of them have threaded ends on them so that you can actually thread on um, different adapters so that you could actually have an alligator clip. Um, some meters come with a removable piece so that you can change out two different styles of meter leads. So it's really kind of up to the technician uh, to determine really kind of what they want to use. Um, while we're doing our testing, we'll bounce back and forth between some different types of leads just so that you can see the variation and some of the benefits of having like this style of lead that you can actually open up and clamp onto a terminal and that way it frees up your hand to do whatever else you need to do. So um, with that, the leads actually tie in to the meter, regardless of the style of meter, they're all going to have a, a common terminal. The common terminal is going to be where your ground lead or your black meter lead connects. Your red lead is going to be moved depending on what you're doing. If you're doing a voltage check um, or you're doing a uh, ohms reading on doing some type of resistance, then you're going to be going between these two ports. If you're going to be doing any type of uh, amperage testing where you have your meter hooked up in line, then you're going to go between with some of the other ports over here. And in this case, you can see these are fused and it has a 440 amp, a 440 milliamp setting and an 11 amp fuse. So that gives you an idea kind of what kind of protection you can have out of your meter. So when you get ready to hook up your meter, again, your black meter lead is always going to go in your common terminal and then your red meter lead is going to go into, again, depending on what you're working on, either your voltage, your um, resistance, or into your amperage. Um, in an off position, again, nothing is turned on. You don't have anything going on with the meter. This one here is a low pass filter um, for voltage. Um, this is AC and DC. Some meters you have a specific AC setting and some you have a specific DC setting. Um, this particular meter has the ability to recognize AC or DC voltage and switches automatically. Your meter may be different, just make sure that you're paying attention to that. In this mode here, you could check voltages. Um, for the machines that we're talking about, you're dealing with anywhere from uh, zero voltage up to 48 volts, sometimes 96 volts. Um, and this meter would be able to uh, accommodate that. The next one is gonna be a the next setting is a millivolt setting. Um, this is going to be doing some real finite testing on sensors and stuff like that to be able to see what some of the output voltages on sensors are because again that could start off in a millivolt range and work its way up. And again in this particular meter, this one does both AC and DC. Your meter may be different so adjust accordingly. The next one is our ohms reading. Um, so this is going to give us the opportunity to read 
uh, resistance, rather that be on a coil um, or checking actually an electrical resistor or something along those lines. But this is gonna give us the ability to read resistance. Um, the meter does auto range. So again, um, down here on the bottom, this one right now is in mega ohms. Um, it could go to kilo ohms, could go to straight ohms. So as you're reading your resistance, you just wanna pay attention to make sure that you're, if you're in an auto ranging system, um, just make sure that you're reading it accordingly. The Hertz cycle is going to give you the ability to read duty cycle. Uh, most machines run a uh, proportional control, um, which is a, a, a duty cycle. That's an on versus off time. Now, um, in the Hertz rating, will give you the ability to see that. So if you hook that up into a proportional signal, you'd be able to read the percentage of on time versus percentage of off time. Um, if your meter has a temperature probe setting, um, this is the temperature. Um, you could actually hook in a temperature probe and get some readings. Um, this is more ambient and stuff like that, more than it is a, a pointer, a laser pointer to um, get surface temperature. It's more of an ambient, just to kind of give you an idea of what like motors and stuff temperatures are running on the outside. The next resistance is micro amperage. Um, again, so if you're dealing with a low amperage uh, component, um, if you have everything hooked up properly, with your meter in the correct setting or correct ports on your meter, you could actually read um, small amperage, um, see what kind of load you're pulling. Um, the next one is milliamps. So this is the milliamp setting. And again, same thing here um, with this particular meter, it's reading both AC and DC amperages. Um, the AC is the sine wave, the DC is the straight line, just again, just for clarification. Um, and then the next one is amperage. Um, when you're using any of those three um, settings, you wanna make sure that you are using the proper port on top of the meter. Again, there is a 400 milliamp fuse and an 11 amp fuse in this meter to protect um, if you're doing any type of current draw um, to make sure you don't damage the meter. Okay. Um, capacitor, um, you can test capacitors with this as well as doing some ignition and some RPM readings, which is what these settings are up here. But for, um, for what we're talking about, this series of videos, we're going to be dealing primarily with voltage, um, ohms, and we may get into some amperage readings. Really what we're going to do over the next uh, few videos here is go through how do we check voltage and how do we um, do that? How do we go through uh, relays? How do we check resistance on coils? How do we check a, um, a contactor? So there's gonna be a lot of things that we're gonna go through over these next few videos, just to make sure that there's an understanding of uh, how to use a meter effectively when it comes to troubleshooting product, okay? So in this case, we're gonna turn on to, let's just say ohms for right now, as soon as you turn it on to the ohm setting, um, you can see it goes into a, uh, an open loop. With it being an open loop, you have nothing connected to give you resistance. Okay, if you take the two meters and you put them together, the meter leads, you can see that you, now your resistance has changed. This is a good way to verify that your meter is set up and working. Some of the other things that we've done in the past, if I'm thinking that I might have a bad cable or a bad harness, I can connect that right into the comms port. So now my meter is just literally reading that loop and I can verify that my meter lead is effective and good to use. All right, thanks for watching. There are several videos in this series. Please take time to check them out. Also tune into the toolbox for other applicable content.